and welcome to Raz Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is the newest installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it stars Benedict Cumberbatch as a brilliant neurosurgeon who loses the use of his hands and in his search for a cure he finds something even better, magic. So what you have in this movie is pretty much Doctor House learns to become a sorcerer and lives in the world of Inception. Introducing the world of magic and the multiverse into the previously established Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is mostly scientific, is something that I thought was, would be hard to achieve. However, all my fears were subsided when I saw the trailers because they looked awesome and I thought, wow, that actually might work. So my expectations were really high going in. And I can simply say that this movie exceeded those expectations by a little bit. This movie really worked for me and I thought it was awesome, even though it's a pretty conventional origin story. I mean, it's nothing we haven't seen in Captain America, Iron Man, or Thor. However, it had unique elements in it that made it really stand out and kind of made it feel like a breath of fresh air, which I thought that the Marvel Cinematic Universe really needed at that point and it got it in this movie. And now I'm going to talk about the top three things that I liked about Doctor Strange. Number three, the final fight scene. Don't worry, I'm not going to be spoiling the final fight scene. I just wanted to say generally that it was really good. I've previously complained about fight scenes being very repetitive with a big beaming thing into the sky and a bunch of fodder things that get killed by the heroes. However, the final battle was unique, creative, and absolutely visually stunning, and I truly enjoyed it. And that's why it's on my list. It's one of my favorite things in the movie. The number two thing that I liked about Doctor Strange was the character of Doctor Strange. This movie introduces this character into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he's gonna play a big role and be in other movies, so obviously this movie needed to introduce him well to work. And it did. Benedict Cumberbatch plays Doctor Strange so perfectly. He goes from page to screen almost effortlessly. I love the way Doctor Strange looked. I love the outfit. I love the cloak of levitation. They did it perfectly. I had two concerns going into this film. And one of them is that Stephen Strange and Tony Stark are very similar characters. And I was worried they were going to be too similar. I mean, you have two characters who are arrogant, narcissistic, successful men who go through a traumatic experience that humbles them and they find themselves and they find their calling and they become heroes. Doctor Strange is not as charming as Tony Stark. Tony Stark is a charming guy, he's very witty, he's very quippy. Doctor Strange can be funny sometimes and can be a dick. However, he has this obsession with being the best. He has this thirst for knowledge and learning and it makes him very different from Tony Stark in that aspect. Also, Doctor Strange goes through a bigger change than Tony Stark does. Doctor Strange was very flawed, as in he had some self-hatred that he was reflecting upon those he loves and he was pushing people away, and we see that in the beginning of the movie. So when we see him move away from that and become a self-sacrificing hero, it feels very satisfying. Doctor Strange was more about the actual character change, finding humility within himself. He was broken and he fixed himself and became a better person for it. So, that difference really stands out for me. The number one thing I liked about Doctor Strange is predictably the visuals. This film is a visual spectacle. Not watching it in 3D or in IMAX is an actual sin. Now there are obvious comparisons to Inception. However, in Inception what they do is that the world kind of bends and folds upon itself geographically, yet in this movie they take that concept and they run away with it. The whole world changes and moves so dynamically. It's like looking at the world through a kaleidoscope and having it collapse and expand and explode and I thought it was absolutely stunning. I watched this movie in IMAX and it took my breath away. From the moment that Tilda Swinton touches Doctor Strange's forehead, <clears throat> you go on a visual roller coaster and it's such a beautiful ride. And also the magic itself is really cool. It reminded me of the alchemy circles that they did in Full Metal Alchemist. And I thought that was such a creative way to portray this power and made it really stand out from other superhero powers that we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As always, no movie is perfect. And now I'm going to talk about the top three things I didn't like about Doctor Strange. Number three, the plot. The film is painted with a conventional brush and it follows the formula of all the origin stories that have happened in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I understand why they don't want to fix something that's not broken. However, I was hoping that this film can delve just a little bit deeper into plot. I don't like it when the plot is so completely on the surface. It's a very good thing that the film is such a character-based story. I mean, this is all about the character, what he goes through, how this man goes from Dr. Stephen Strange into Dr. Strange, the sorcerer. However, there were certain plot elements that I felt were rushed, especially throughout the training of Doctor Strange. I just wish we could have seen Doctor Strange struggle more to get his powers so that when he actually has them, it felt more earned and it was more of an epic reveal of a new sorcerer rather than just going from A to C while skipping B. Because it really felt like he was just training and learning and trying and then suddenly, poof, now he has powers. 
And also, I felt that there were certain character backstories that I would have liked to know more about. The number two thing I didn't like about Doctor Strange, guess what? The villain. <sighs> oh, Marvel. Marvel and its throwaway villains. Yet again, Marvel is unable to establish a strong enough villain, other than Loki, to be a proper foil for our heroes. They're always an afterthought, they always just exist to show off the hero's powers and then poof, they're gone. Don't get me wrong, I thought that Mads Mikkelsen's performance was amazing. I just wish we dealt just a little bit deeper into his character so that he can have a better impact on the film. The biggest thing missing from this villain is his backstory. I mean, we hear his backstory being referred to us in dialogue. This villain has a big problem with the Ancient One, he feels betrayed, he wants revenge, he wants power, la 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 la, all of this is great! The solution would have been easy. We should have seen him before he becomes the villain. We should have seen him when he was a good guy, when he was a trainee, just like Dr. Stephen Strange is. And I think that would have been really important because it would have highlighted how different Dr. Strange's journey is from the villain. Thus, they are foils to each other and it would have been more impactful than just, oh, he's a bad guy, now we have to stop him. I wouldn't say this is one of the worst of Marvel villains. He's no weird blood guy from Thor 2, whatever that guy's name is. I don't even remember his name, the elf dude, whatever, I don't remember. I thought that he was still a cool character. I really liked the design. I loved the fighting scenes that included him. His fighting style was amazing. He had super cool powers. However, I wish Marvel yet again made a better effort at a villain. The number one thing I didn't like about Doctor Strange was the Ancient One. Now, let me explain because I didn't think that the Ancient One was bad. The Ancient One was actually pretty cool in this movie. Tilda Swinton is an amazing actress and I thought that she did a tremendous job. And there are scenes between her and Doctor Strange that are probably my favorite scenes in the whole movie. I really liked the fact that the Ancient One was actually a woman. I thought that broke the mold and it was a really nice addition. However, why was she a white woman? The fact of the matter is Doctor Strange is an American. He's a white male and it would have been nice for him to receive this kind of otherworldly perspective and a new vision on reality from someone from another culture, from a different ethnicity, from the Far East. And that's why it was really cool in the comics and worked really well. Western medicine fails Doctor Strange, thus he turns east and finds a different life there. He finds different answers and it changes his whole perspective on life. So I have a lady there with a British accent telling me these things. Sometimes it took me out of the film. It becomes less authentic, I feel. I can only imagine how awesome it would have been if the Ancient One was an Asian female. It would have been amazing. I know that some people might disagree with me. But look at it this way. Think of Karate Kid and Mr. Miyagi and how effective it was to hear all of these Eastern philosophies being taught from him to a white kid in suburbia. Now take Karate Kid, remove the Asian actor who plays Mr. Miyagi, and replace him with uh, Owen Wilson. Exactly. All in all, Doctor Strange is a great new installment in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I love the movie, I love the character, and I really enjoyed the visual aspect of it. Even though it's flawed, it still managed to be unique, and it still managed to be super enjoyable, and that's why I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. So, did you see Doctor Strange? Did you like it? Are you looking forward to seeing the character in other Marvel films? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, please let me know if there's anything you'd like me to review for you next. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See ya!